I have always wanted to build a rocket, so last month when me and the science boys took a tour of SpaceX, I hatched a plan. While they were busy taking photos, I was stealing company secrets. And I have discovered something huge. I've also discovered this bolt on the launch pad. I hope it's not important. Anyway, I wasn't allowed to take pictures inside the facility. What about if we analyze some videos on YouTube? Maybe then I can learn how to make a rocket. Uh, yikes. Oh, oh. Are you serious? Oh. I've decided not to make a rocket, but what about a rocket engine? I found this video of some Russian guy that made a rocket-powered sand blaster, and it's honestly the best amateur rocket engine I have ever seen on YouTube, so I did what Americans have to do. I've continued the tradition of stealing secrets from the Russians. Watching the video, I have an idea of how this is assembled, and it looks like three tubes nested together. Air enters the outer tube and is distributed into the center tube, which is the combustion chamber. Fuel is injected at one end of the combustion chamber, and the nozzle is at the other end. This actually looks pretty easy to make, so I cut up some tubes that fit inside of each other, made some spacers for the tubes with my lathe, drilled some holes in the combustion chamber, and then welded everything together. Now the nozzle? pretty important part. It turns the high pressure gas in the combustion chamber into high speed gas as it expands down the exhaust. NASA has a ton of information devoted to finding the perfect optimal rocket nozzle geometries, but I'm no rocket scientist, so I just kind of eyeballed it and I made three different sized rocket nozzles and I'm just gonna see which one works the best. All right, let's get serious because we are about to test out the rocket. Propane is coming in here to the back of the rocket. Compressed air. So this is what we're gonna be using to ignite it. It's got two taser modules on it. You just slide it over the spark plug like this, press the button on the back, makes a little spark. So hopefully this will be able to ignite our rocket. Here we go. So first I'm gonna give it some air, then I'm gonna increase the propane until it ignites and then I'll figure it out from there. Maybe some more air. Oh, oh. That was crazy. Did you see that? I accidentally turned it off, but you gotta see the trees over there. All the bushes are just going crazy. When I first turned it on, it was like pushing itself backwards a little bit. I really didn't think it was gonna have that much thrust. Okay, we gotta try that again. So the patterns that you can see in the exhaust are called shock diamonds, and they appear when the exhaust gas is traveling at a supersonic speed. The patterns are formed when the exhaust pressure is lower than the surrounding atmospheric pressure. So the air pressure squeezes the exhaust and that's what causes those bright spots. Okay, so this works amazing, but you hear the compressor running? This thing uses so much air, it drains the tank in like 20 seconds. The rocket just uses way more air than my little compressor can keep up with. So if I'm going to get a bigger air compressor, I might as well just make a bigger rocket too. So I was looking at these diesel powered air compressors, but the problem is they cost $800 to rent for a week. So this video is sponsored by Morning Brew. It is a newsletter, a free newsletter. Just type in your email and you get the daily news sent to your inbox every day. Like most of you, before I subscribed to Morning Brew, I wake up, I get on my phone and I kind of bounce around the internet for a few hours. But with Morning Brew, I still lay in bed on my phone, but I get all of my business, tech, and finance news all in five minutes. TV news sucks. We all know this. It's boring. It takes them an hour to get through the day's stories. The only thing it's good for is keeping my dogs entertained while I'm gone. And now he posts conspiracies on Twitter. Morning Brew is concise, it's witty, and it's informative. I just learned that you should probably never trust a celebrity pumping a cryptocurrency or an NFT. And I learned that dogs can understand the difference between natural language and gibberish. Now there is no reason not to subscribe to Morning Brew. I already said it's free and it takes 50 seconds. You already could have done it by now if you're interested in business, tech, finance, it takes 15 seconds to sign up. I'm serious. Go to morningbrew.com slash backyard to sign up. Use my link, type in your email, hit submit, you're done. Let's get back to the video. The new rocket is twice the size of the first one, so that means that it needs more fuel. And I've got this little hydraulic pump that can pump up to one liter per minute at 700 PSI. So I've got the rocket, I've got the fuel, now I'm going to get the air compressor. And she is how you say. Muy bonito. 49 horsepower, dual air outlets, 185 cubic feet per minute. Inside, she is powered by two rotating screws. Okay, I got a little carried away, but all you need to know is that it puts out a lot of air. So much air that when you touch it, it feels like you're almost touching a force field or a stream of water instead of a bunch of air. Anyway, it's probably time to stop messing around with this and start testing out our rocket. That was a bad idea. So it's about to get dark outside, perfect time to test out the rocket. So we're gonna hook it up to some propane and test it out and see what kind of power this thing can put out.
Dude, we just made a rocket, Steven. That was so cool. It worked so well. It worked good. What do we want to test it on? Let's try some things. All right. What if we try to state? Because I'm curious, what if you touch the rocket exhaust? What would happen to your fingers? So we're going to try a steak. Oh, man. All right, let's try this out. Steven started out by just trying to sear the outside of the steak, but then he brought the steak directly into the exhaust stream. I thought that the hot exhaust exiting at about 5,000 feet per second would act like a lightsaber, but it didn't burn the meat so much as it just completely shredded it. You can see the exhaust is kind of unstable, and that's because we were using so much propane that the tank started getting cold and losing pressure. I kind of thought this might happen, so we're going to use the hydraulic pump instead. Wow, look at that meat. It is just, it cut it in half, Steven. It totally cut the meat in half. It's just roasted it. Definitely don't it's stick like... your finger in there. Now we're going to find out what happens if you put your wiener in a rocket. Let's try it. Starting the liquid-fueled rocket is a little bit more difficult. I spray some starting fluid in it to get it started first, and then I slowly increase the air until I get ignition. Then I turn on the main fuel pump and I adjust it till I get a nice, stable output. I have to slowly put the hot dog in the exhaust or it would just instantly cut the hot dog in half. And I feel like this really shows how powerful the rocket exhaust is. I mean, the hot dog and the rocket exhaust are acting like opposing magnets. Just trying to push it into the exhaust wouldn't work at all. So I had to grab it on either side and slowly bring it into the flame. And I've got to say, these shock diamonds look so cool. And I was super excited to see them just persisting like that. Switching to kerosene really made a difference in how bright the exhaust was too. The propane was just a little bit too pale, but one downside of kerosene is that it makes a lot of smoke when you run it too rich. Not that it really matters when you're making this much smoke drilling a hole through a piece of wood. That was the best one yet. That, that was so, so good. Well. Now we're going to be trying a coconut. I'm gonna wear gloves this time because uh, looking back at that footage, that was very scary. It's easier to start the rocket when it's still hot because when the kerosene touches the hot metal on the inside, it vaporizes and the spark plug can ignite it better. You see all the stuff coming out of the coconut? That means that we drilled through it. And that white stuff isn't just the coconut water, it is the entire inside of the coconut blasted out just like that. And then we flipped the coconut over to drill through the other side and I'm pretty sure we just made the world's first coconut-based afterburner. Oh my gosh, it is, it's completely hollow on the inside. I thought we were just gonna like drill through it or something and we would see some like coconut meat left on the inside, but it's all gone, it's just, the wood of the coconut, that's wild. I gotta tell you guys how hard it is to hold something up against that rocket exhaust. It's like, what would you say that is? I mean, I mean, it feels like pushing against a 200 pound person pushing against you. You really have to fight it, it's impressive. This rocket engine was so cool, we scavenged for more things to test and you know we had to try a watermelon. It held up pretty well at first, but once the flame made it through the exterior, it was all over. Take notes, Mark Rober, this is how you make a watermelon smoothie. We also tried a cabbage and it exploded exactly like I expected it to. The exhaust drilled through the leaves, ablating them from the cabbage. Next we tried an apple which split right in half, and then a can of sparkling water which honestly put up more of a fight than I was expecting. It couldn't hold on for long though, the heat caused a pressure increase which popped the top and then the flame made it through the can and blasted out all of the water. The rocket engine was working really good so we decided to try some more things. We tried the second steak and the results were way more impressive than when we used propane as the fuel. You can see it just shredding the meat and bits of it were flying through the air. In fact, it might even be a little bit too powerful. I am covered in meat. This is terrible. I wanted to see if I could use this to cut through some aluminum, but the rocket had other plans. It was really hard to keep it steady, but once I got a hold of it, the flame cut through it just like a plasma cutter. I could even punch a hole straight through the center. I was kind of worried about hypersonic molten aluminum particles being flung out by the rocket exhaust, but everything turned out okay. Speaking of shrapnel, we also wanted to try a can of shaving cream, and this was pretty scary. I imagined the can just exploding from the pressure buildup, so we focused the exhaust on the top of the can, which is where the seam is. And finally, we tested a whole coconut, and the sparks and embers that came off of this thing were crazy. I really wish we could have done some slow motion, but it was just too dark outside, and if we used lights, you wouldn't be able to see the exhaust. Anyway, this has got to be the fastest way to remove the husk from a coconut.
In addition to developing a backyard space program, I've also been developing some new t-shirt designs. Four new t-shirt designs are now available on my website. And to everybody that has been sending me daily memes for the past month, please stop. I give up. You win the free t-shirt. I can't take it anymore. My inbox has been completely destroyed for the past month. To everybody else, you can go to shop.backyardscientist to check out the merch. And I will see you guys. Yo, guys.